The first use case you think about blockchain is payments, right? So that's the first thing you want to you want to do is show that you can secure a payment mechanism, just like Visa, Mastercard, but much more secure without middlemen, take away the fees, uh, offers economies of scale. So the more people use it, the cheaper it gets. The, the way we view the future of value in the long term, three to five to ten years, we view. Layer one blockchains will essentially become like the new republics. These will be the new mechanisms where all the value is going to proliferate to. In the future, there will be the layer one blockchain, there will be the mining market, there will be the dApps, and there will be tokens. So the lower you get in the stack, the uh, lower risk you have, but the lower rewards. The highest risk reward will be on the layer one blockchain, because that's where all the value will, 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 will flow up. But it's highest value, highest risk. We view layer one blockchains, which is Bitcoin, Cisco, and Ethereum, as court systems. They need to be combative to the external forces that we don't control, even in the software world, in the real world, like inflation, hyperinflation, wars. These systems need to be secure from that. And this is why we view Bitcoin as the gold standard for security and decentralization. What else does the world need? You know, what else does the world cherish when you have something like Bitcoin? How can we extend that to something else where we can take advantage to build real world utility? This is where Ethereum comes in. For me, Ethereum is a gold standard for flexibility or general computation. We're trying to stick to the gold standards we know the world's going to cherish and, and develop on, and we put those two concepts together. And this is what Syscoin is. Oh, wow. Let's see here. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Awesome. What's up, people? I am. That hotep Jesus dude. That hotep, that hotep, that hotep, that hotep, that hotep Jesus dude. Welcome. If you're not familiar, I am hotep Jesus. Hope everyone's having a wonderful afternoon morning whatever time it is in your time zone weather's getting cold and i don't like it although it is rather warm here today in sunny new jersey as you know this uh channel is sponsored by syscoin shout out to the syscoin squad um big announcements coming soon so look out for those announcements i can't say anything it's top secret it's confidential but in a few days um, actually, I think in about a week, you guys are going to hear some really interesting news. Um, sometime after my birthday, my birthday is Saturday, October 1st. Hooray, hooray, hooray. But without further ado, um, <clears throat> let's hop in right into uh, today's conversation. Today's conversation uh, surrounds a video I saw this weekend or last week or something like that. And I bookmarked it and I was like, yeah, I want to talk about this. This is right up my alley, as everybody knows. I am a uh, connoisseur of uh, communism, so anytime I hear um, Marxism mentioned, my ears perk up, my interest perks up, and I immediately want to have a discussion surrounding the uh, subject matter. Now, um, this happened in Dutch Parliament. Ordinarily, I don't like to talk about uh, foreign countries, but because, like I said, I'm a connoisseur of communism. Uh, I felt that it was quite relevant, especially since it was disgusting, the, discussing the Western nations, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, it's quite alarming. And it, it relates to things that happen in the United States uh, as far as educational institutions are concerned. So with that being said, let's hop right into the article. And then we're going to play the video. Uh, and then I'll, I actually uh, I sat there and I rewrote the transcript so there's a transcript in the description box below of this youtube video bit shoot wherever you're watching this there is a transcript below of the actual comments that uh thierry uh how do you say his name Baudet, Baudet, i think is how you say it um okay why is this not on my screen hold on let me fix this um All right, here we go. Uh, can you see that? You can't see that, can you? 
course not. Well, well, why is it? Wait, why did it put it there? Wait, why? <laughs> what the hell? Um. Okay, here we go. I updated uh, OBS, so it's doing some funky things. Um. Okay, so here it says Cog brands bought day extremists after spy college tirade derails budget this was published on september 22nd 2022 it's about four days ago and uh, here you see a picture of um miss cog walking out of the session it says here finance minister sigrid cog branded form vor democrati leader uh thierry baudet a threat to Dutch democracy after his claims that she attended a college for spies disrupted the opening day of the budget debate. Cog led a walkout by the entire cabinet after Baud Day began his contribution with a tirade about St. Anthony's College in Oxford, where Cog obtained a master's degree in international relations in the 1980s. Uh, as Baud Day began describing the college as a training college for the Western Secret Services and global elites, Cog rose from her seat and left, quickly followed by the rest of the uh, ministerial ministerial team, including Prime Minister Mark Root. Um, it's not just about tonight and it's not just about me, Cog said after the first day of the debate concluded in the early hours. The wider story uh, about radicalization. Uh, these are the voices of the extreme right. Now, when I when I when we watch the video and, and I read the transcript, I want you to tell me if this sounds like uh, radicalization. I'm sure it's radical to the Marxists. You know, they hate being called out. I'm sure it's radical to the left because they hate being called out. And they hate when the truth um, is exposed. Anytime the truth is exposed and brought into the light, um, people like to castigate. And um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, tarnish the reputation of the speaker. Uh, discredit the witness. Uh, common law attorney tactic. Um, and label it something that it's not. So they'll go to the extreme and say, hey, uh, this is radicalization. This is the extreme right. This is what they'll say. Extreme radicalization. Um, these words uh, of profundity. These words of uh, hi hi just hyperbolic rhetoric. Continues here. She said Baudet's comments were consistent with a pattern of half truths framing. And in this case, obviously peddling a half baked story on behalf of a dictator alluding to Baudet's support for Russian President Vladimir Putin. Um, Putin is somebody who I haven't had a chance to intensely study, but being that I am studying Russia, I'm sure eventually I will have to. Uh, understand this gentleman uh, and I plan on interviewing actual Russians Russians that hate him and Russians that like him and see what their take is anyway it says Baud Day was expelled from the chamber on Monday evening by parliamentary chair Vera Burkamp after he pressed ahead with his speech ignoring Burkamp's demands to return to the subject of the debate and like I said we will read the full transcript of that section um, just that I think it's like a minute and 30, uh, section of, of, of his speech. Uh, I don't have the full transcript, but I have a transcript of his part, the controversial part. So we'll read that and we'll play the video as well. Uh, Root bagged his, uh, backed his colleague's decision to leave the debating chamber, an unprecedented move, uh, which forced Burkamp to suspend the debate as at least one minister has to be present. Getting up and leaving the room was our way of showing what we thought, Root said. These are limits to what you can accept. Baudet had been silent for the first six hours of Monday's debate while other leaders grilled Sophie Hermans, parliamentary leader of Root's VVD party, uh, 
on the details of the coalition's of 2023 budget. Baudet had been due to speak later in the evening, but as it is sloppy, brought forward because his partner was due to give birth. His, interve his intervention dominated the late news bulletins. Uh, Forum Vor Demarcati uh, won eight seats at last year's general election, but was reduced to a, a rump of five within weeks after. Um, Vibren Van Haga, the party's number two candidate on the electoral list, walked out, taking two colleagues with him. On the second day of debate on Tuesday, ministers will respond to the issues raised by the MPs on the first day. So I think how this works it sort of works like ancient rome if i'm not mistaken but um you know certain provinces or parties can hold a certain number of seats based upon um the percentage of votes um that they get or something like that i'm no expert on this stuff i'm still studying but if anybody knows uh please correct me or affirm that my speculation is correct so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to play the video, but I'm going to play the video on mute. Um, and I'm going to read the transcript instead. Uh, I think so. This is the tweet that I found, which I thought was hilarious um, from this guy, real Robert. And he says, the Netherlands, watch all Democrats walk out as Thierry Baudet is speaking. Apparently, his speech hits a raw nerve with the Marxists. Then Speaker Pelosi stops the debate as Democrats walk out and silenced Thierry Baudet. So he's obviously being um, sarcastic here. There is no Speaker Pelosi. There is no there are no Democrats, at least not any American Democrats in this um, in this hearing, in this session. Um, but he's just trying to illustrate you know, what it looks like in a foreign country and also uh, piques the interest of Americans. Americans are going to pay attention because like, oh, my God, you mentioned Nancy Pelosi. Let me let me tune in. You mentioned Democrats. Let me tune in. It's a little bit of a trigger there. So let me see. Maybe I can press play on this and then read the, the, the transcript in English because he's speaking Dutch, I believe. Um, and then I'll just play his on mute while I read the transcript. Yeah, we'll do that. So do the on. So uh, he says entire generations of Europeans. Um, and like I said, it's in the description box if you want to follow along there. Oh, wait, shoot. Anyway, entire generations of Europeans were taught by pro-Soviet and pro-Mao Marxists. One example is St. Anthony's College in Oxford, where Sigrid Zie Kog got her uh, MPhil degree there. It is a uh, little more than a training institution for Western secret society, secret services. I'm sorry, secret services. In other words, for pre precisely the globalist elite attempting to plan our lives. Vera Bear Camp uh, interjects, Mr. Baudet, we agree not to make it personal in the presence of the Minister of Finance, where she studied is irrelevant. So spreading conspiracy theories is unacceptable. No ifs or buts. Please continue your speech. Baudet continues, he says. St. Anthony College, St. Anthony's College is known as the spy college in Oxford. The British Secret Intelligence Service recruited from there. That's a fact. Look it up. It shows how linked Marxism has been to the deep state for decades. Vera Baron Camp uh, interjects and says your closing remarks, Mr. Baudet. Mr. Baudet says, right. Those people, the ones storming off the heirs of this criminal ideology that caused the French and Russian revolutions. An ideology. Um, that transformed into cultural Marxism in the second half of the 20th century. Uh, they set the agenda of modern globalism. Why is the cabinet walking off? It's a fact that Sigrid Cog studied at St. Anthony's College. It's also a perfect example of the ties between intelligence services, uh, Marxism and the recruitment of the global deep state. Vera, Vera Burkamp, I suspend the meeting for the moment. I'm sorry, you were supposed to be watching the video at the same time. Um, I guess I'll play it while I uh, give some commentary on um, what was said here. Let me just pull out my document here so I can um, follow along. You guys see him talking. OK, good, good, good. All right. So he makes he makes some. Um, he makes a very bold claim, several bold claims, I would say. Um, first of all, he talks about um, 
Entire generations of Europeans were taught by pro-Soviet and pro-Maoist Marx, pro-Mao Marxists. Um, I can't disagree with that. Um, as we know, um, the left is pretty much the power structure. Um, uh, there's no room for, um, or I should say there's very little room for, for right wing thought for right-wing ideology, for conservative ideology. Um, uh, you know, when I look back through um, the archives of European history, um, there was a, a vast amount of um, conservatives. There were conservative elites, conservative people, conservative army. And it did exist, and it seems as though um, the left, the liberals um, were the ones that were driving legislation, whereas the conservatives held much of uh, the armed forces. And then obviously pacts were made between armed forces and the liberals and their governments, etc., etc. Um, and then, uh, you know, leads us to today. Right. Um let me bring the camera back on me while I talk to you. Okay, so you guys saw the video. Wonderful. Good, good, good. Let me bring the document back up on my screen so I can know where I'm talking about. Okay, so, yeah. So, you can also substitute this and say entire generations of Americans were taught by pro-Soviet, um, pro-Mao um, Marxists. Um, you would not see very much conservative-leaning ideas. Um we saw the response to uh, Donald Trump in the past few years, and uh, he was vehemently opposed um, by educational institutions um, and media institutions. So I don't see how that is a conspiracy theory. To me, it seems like a conspiracy fact. Um, and then when we talk about Soviet Russia, Soviet Russia, you know, basically is just socialism. It's just communism. That's pretty much what that is. Um, or a variation of. And he's con uh, so he continues. He says one good example is St. Anthony's College in Oxford, where Secret Cog got her MPhil degree there. Uh, it's little more than a training institution for Western secret societies. In other words, for precisely uh, the globalist elite attempting to plan our lives. So I like to be objective and say, you know, what is fact and, and what is potentially fiction here? So it is fact that she did attend St. Anthony's College in Oxford. Uh, that's fact. Um, is it a training institution for Western secret societies? Uh, well, uh, that's up for debate. You can't say it is and you can't say it isn't. We have to look at the evidence and uh, decide. And I'm going to show you some evidence in a minute. Um, it says, in other words, uh, precisely the globalist elite attempting to plan our lives. Um, now that right there, objectively speaking, could be conjecture or rhetoric. Um, if you ask me my personal opinion, I would have to agree with Mr. Bauday. I, I do feel as though um, there is a uh, globalist elite planning our lives. I mean, they uh, openly um, admit this. They admitted this uh, at the Davos meeting. Um, and, and, and plenty of other places, uh, where they've talked about a new world order and et cetera, et cetera. So we don't have to go into that stuff. You guys watch Alex Jones. You guys are familiar with that. Um, so, um, and if you guys want to comment, ask a question, go ahead and hit the super chat and I'll read those at the end. Uh, and then he says, St. Anthony's uh, college is known as the spy college in Oxford, the British secret intelligence service recruited from there. That's a fact. Look it up shows how linked Marxism has been to the deep state for decades. So, I, you know, he said, look it up. So I was like, OK, I'll look it up. Um, and then let's see what I found was this. Uh, my life as an almost spy in the USSR. And it says here, uh, spies were a glamour news item in Western and Soviet press in the 1960s. It was the age of Kim Philby, British spy master, cum Soviet spy. 
and the endless media hunt for the fifth man of the Cambridge Five. Uh, that's the environment I entered in 1966 when I went to uh, Moscow as a British Council Exchange student. I started to convey how exotic and potentially powerless Moscow seemed to Westerners then. This was at the height of the Cold War when scarcely any foreigners could live for a year in Moscow alongside Soviet citizens. And we British students, I was actually Australian, but it was a British exchange, were specially briefed by someone from MI6 about the dangers of making Soviet friends since they could all be spies and assume the same of us. I believe this is the woman's image here. It says here, presumably there were some real spies in our British group. <laughs> there certainly were in the Soviet group sent to Britain since one of them ended up as number three man in the KGB. I myself was not a spy, uh, even though the place at which I was doing my Soviet history doctorate, St. Anthony's in Oxford, was notorious in both British and Soviet press as a spy college. Now, this was an article published in 2014 by Sheila Fitzpatrick. <laughs> And uh, she's a, uh, this is um, a primary source. You're hearing it from the horse's mouth. It says right here. Let me make sure you can see that on your screen. St. Anthony's in Oxford was notorious in both the British and Soviet press as a spy college. Having been founded after the war by ex-intelligence people. <laughs> I mean, is Thierry Baudet off? Is he off? I don't sound like it to me from this primary source. Seems legitimate. <laughs> and also, I just want to point out something else. I just want to do a little bit of speculation. She says right here, I myself was not a spy. Well, that's something a spy would say, right? 007 is not going to say, hey, I'm a spy. Spies are supposed to deny the existence of being a spy. That's the whole point of being a spy. Not to say that she was or wasn't. I'm just saying that's what a spy would say. But it's CC. She tells us right here. She tells us right here. I actually want to finish reading this. I hadn't read this past this, but I actually want to just kind of like read this until it gets boring. Um... But sometimes I felt like one. Oh, wow. <laughs> see, I see my intuition told me keep reading and or I should say my interest or both. Maybe I don't know. She said, but sometimes I felt one just because from the Soviet standpoint, anyone who tried to find out things the Soviet Union didn't want known about itself in its history qualified as a spy. Uh, I spent uh, three lonely months falling in love with Moscow. But knowing almost nobody, then I made Russian friends, as most of the British did, uh, who turned out to be friends for life. Um, OK, yeah, now I'm like not interested. The only thing that was exciting. Uh, uh, so she was a Soviet historian. Interesting. I'm about to dive into this lady. She seems very interesting. Oh, OK, all nearly all while the Communist Party's archive opened because the formerly ruling party was now no longer in power. The KGB archive stayed closed for the opposite reason. The KGB named renamed SFB FSB was one Soviet institution that survived the debacle more or less intact. Uh, it makes sense that the strongest and savviest of Russia's post-Soviet leaders, Vladimir Putin, came from its ranks. Uh, in the Soviet Union, you didn't joke about being a spy anymore than you would now joke at any international airport about being a terrorist with a bomb. Um, I'd uh, forgotten that uh, when I wrote my Soviet memoir and called it a spy in the archives, or perhaps I thought it was no longer relevant since the Soviet Union was dead. Russian friends quickly set me right. If you're a foreigner and had any sense, you still don't joke about being a spy. So uh, Thierry Baudet obviously shouldn't be joking about being a spy. 
But anyway, let's come back to what she says here. She says here that St. Anthony's College in Oxford was founded by ex-intelligence people and was notorious for being a spy college. Now, Thierry, let's bring back my doc. Let's bring my doc onto your screen here so you guys can see that. Now, Thierry here, he says, St. Anthony's known as a spy college in Oxford, right? Now, Cog here, um, she says his body began, uh, or the article says his body began describing the college as a training college for Western Secret Services and globalist elites. He didn't specifically say that, did he? Yeah, I don't see anywhere. Oh. <coughs> okay, he said Western Secret Services. Okay. Um, which, which technically could be most of Europe. So it's still not off. Um, Cog rose from receipt and left quickly followed by, it's not just about tonight. It's not just about me. Cog set up the first day to write a story about radicalism, extreme, right? Said, but it were, it were consistent with a pattern of half truths, um, peddling a half big story on behalf of a dictator. Um, she's not denying. I want to see if she was denying. I hadn't remembered if she denied any of this. Now, obviously, she's walking out of the room because she's being targeted specifically and in somewhat being accused of being a spy. And I think, um, yeah, well, you know, it is what it is. Um, but, you know, as we've shown already, that seems to be uh, plausible. That this is a uh, college for spies. So if anybody has any interest in becoming a spy, you know where to go. St. Anthony's College in Oxford. Um, Baudet, right. Uh, these, those people, the ones storming off, the heirs of this criminal ideology that caused the French and Russian revolutions. So I wanted to pause right here on that part. And, um, and just add a little bit of texture. Um, yes. Um. French, Russian Revolution. In fact, you know, pretty much all of Europe was influenced by Marxism, by communism. Um, I mean, how does Europe, who goes from monarchy to democracy, seemingly overnight, how has this happened? Well, obviously, Wall Street money was funneled into a lot of these communist revolutions. Um, I'd just like to add that um, Germany is in that list. Um, and, um, I'm even going to venture and say the Ottoman empire and, and my list is growing. Um, as I do more research, my list is growing. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm three different, uh, in that time period. One of them 600 pages long. Another one is a thousand pages long and another one is another thousand pages long. So I'm slowly working my way through these. I'm going to spend much of the afternoon reading these documents uh, it's documentation as well as studying my chess, like a good Russian would. What happened? Okay, my back. What? Where did they cut me off at? Where did they cut me off at? Chat. Where did where did they cut me off at? I just want to. I just want to make sure. I um where did I, I pick up where I left off? Uh, I want to make sure. Tacos from Mars said refresh the browser. Two minutes ago? What did I say two minutes ago? Only about thirty seconds? Okay. Alright, so you didn't miss too much. Okay. So um yeah, so basically my speculation is um all of Europe was influenced. Okay, cool. Right when I was talking, talking about the revolution, right? So, um, uh, my speculation, um, is that, uh, all of the thrones of Europe, 
uh, were overthrown by uh, Marxist communist revolutions. And I'm in the middle of um, reading three different documents. Um, one is a uh, two of them are a thousand page documents. Another one is 600 page book and um, working through those uh, currently uh, so I can bring you guys uh, more refined information and more context uh, because, uh, you know, what led me on this on this search was, um, uh, yeah, the Ottoman Empire to the Ottoman Empire, I feel, was uh, heavily influenced by um, communism and the overthrow of their. Um, oh, fuck. What do they call their leaders? The um, uh, it'll come back to me later. Uh, but, but you know, I was I was studying the 10 planks of Marxism. I was reading Marx's work and I said, this looks like the United States. And I remember about five years ago, I tweeted, I said, United States is a communist nation. And I got a lot of flack for that today. If you tweet that out, not too many people would disagree, uh, especially after the events that happened during the pandemic and the government's response to that. Um, but essentially that is, um, what led me on this path of wanting to understand communism. And as I saw crowns falling in Europe, I said, okay, communism, um, seems to be the common denominator. Um, so yeah, let's go back to the document. So he's right. Um, this criminal ideology did cause the French and Russian revolutions. Uh, this is an ideology that transformed into cultural Marxism. So cultural Marxism, this is um, communism that's basically infecting the minds of the uh, of the populace, of the people. Um, and um, I haven't I haven't uh, studied cultural Marxism. Uh, too much and mostly because we're living it. You don't have to study cultural Marxism. We're living in it. Um, if you are uh, a Trump voter, if you are on the uh, right hand side of the spectrum, even if you're a centrist, uh, you've experienced cultural Marxism. You experience it online um, with wrong think. Um, you will see uh, how um leftists respond to you um in fact let's let's pull up an example of cultural marxism right now that i think that's a good idea i didn't plan this but since we're here i'll show you uh and this is sort of like co coerced or incentivized cultural marxism but here let's 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 pull this up so i have two videos i'll show you which should be uh quite alarming uh, let's play this one and then I'll play the second one after. So let's play this one here. I was just offered $400 to make an anti Donald Trump propaganda post related to the January 6th investigation. That is completely not true. I should start out this video by saying I'm not a Donald Trump supporter. So that should give a little bit of context to where I'm coming from. I'm an attorney. I post legal news and analysis on related topics. Okay, here we go with the story. So first thing first, I get an email from somebody with the Good Info Foundation. We'll talk about them a little more in a minute. I'm going to refer to this person as Jane. Jane sent me a message letting me know she represented the Good Info Foundation and that she was willing to offer a paid collaboration to discuss some topics related to January 6th. I said, sure, why not? I'll learn some more. Jane says the Good Info Foundation will give me $400 to make a post on my page and then share it to Instagram. So you see that blue link? All right, here, we're gonna follow it. These are the specific requirements in order to obtain that $400 of how I should refer to the January 6th Capitol raid. Number one, I must call this a criminal conspiracy. Number two, I must say Trump Republicans were responsible. Number three, I must frame it as an attack on my country, an attack on America or Americans, a criminal conspiracy and a committed crime. I must attribute the matter to MAGA Republicans. I must make clear that this was ongoing and unresolved. And most importantly, that I must channel all of this unto the manipulation of voter agencies so that I could turn their anger around this event into defiance that would make people more likely to vote in midterms. And the thing that struck me the most was this part, where I was told to talk about the aspects of the Trump campaign's plan. And I was supposed to say that the Trump campaign paid literally millions of dollars to make January 6th happen. 
So I figured, you know, maybe I missed something. So I said, hey, Jane, what is the basis for the claim that the Trump campaign itself paid millions of dollars to make the January 6th siege of the Capitol happen? Jane doesn't answer the question. Hi, Preston. If you don't want to state that in the video, it's fine. You don't have to use all the bullet points provided. So I kept going. Sure, I'm just wondering if there's support for that claim. Jane doesn't answer again. Let me know if you are interested and the rate works for you. Thanks so much. I'm not interested and the rate doesn't work for me. This is the Good Info Foundation. They boast on their homepage that good information is the lifeblood of a democracy. Um, so that even has some um, Orwellian implications. You know, where bad is good and good is bad. And they're obviously being the opposite of, you know, what they say they are. They call themselves good, but they're spreading bad information or incentivizing the spread. So let's let's go to another example of cultural Marxism. Like I said, we don't have to study this stuff. We're living it. When are we going to start banning MAGA Republicans from establishments? If you're wearing the shirt and you're wearing the hat, don't come in my store. Don't come in my restaurant. Kick them out of the fucking bank. I don't care. They're repping it like a gang. And anywhere else, gang violence isn't tolerated. So why is it for them? They're just uneducated white people. Kick them out. It's funny that she says um, uneducated because, um, well, these people, quite frankly, are uneducated. Um, they are. Um, how do I describe this? Is there a word in the dictionary for this? Basically, what I'm trying to say is um, a person who's only educated on one side of, the, of things. Is there a word for that? People educated on one side of the story. And they only have been taught one side of the coin. They've only seen one side of the coin. They haven't seen both sides. They only seen one side. So therefore, they're not getting um, the full picture. They're not getting a full picture. Um, that's better. Daytime. I'm sorry. I was supposed to have my daytime up here and I have my nighttime up here. I'm sorry, people. I apologize. Um. But yeah, she like Steph Carlin said, she could be on payroll. I don't know if she is. I don't want to make the claim that she is because I don't have that proof. But again, coming back to um, the good words of Thierry Baudet, he says um, the criminal ideology uh, and then ide ideology that transformed into cultural Marxism. So let's go ahead. Let's just go and type in what cultural Marxism means and um, all right let's go all right let's go here um, all right so wiki says cultural Marxism redirects here okay it says uh, cultural Marxism conspiracy theory it says the term cultural Marxism refers to a far-right anti-semitic conspiracy theory which claims that Western Marxism is a basis of continuing academic and intellectual efforts to subvert Western culture. The conspiracy theory misrepresents the Frankfurt School as being responsible for modern progressive movements, identity politics, and political correctness, claiming there is an ongoing and in intentional subversion of Western society via a planned culture war that undermines the Christian values of traditionalist conservatism and seeks to replace them with the culturally liberal values of the 1960s. Um, it says here, although similarities with the Nazi propaganda term cultural Bolshevism have been noted, uh, the contemporary conspiracy theory originating in the United States during the 1990s originally found only on the far right political fringe. The term began to enter mainstream discourse in the 1920s and is now found globally. The conspiracy theory of a Marxist culture war is promoted by right wing politicians, fundamentalist religious leaders, political commentators in mainstream print and television media and white supremacist terror and white supremacist terrorists and has been described as a foundational element of the alt-right worldview. Whatever happened to alt-right? 
Um, scholarly analysis of conspiracy theory has concluded that it has no basis in facts. Okay, sure. Um, <laughs> according to Wiki, right? Um, and then it says here, um, origins. Um, let's see what the origins are. The essay, uh, New Dark Age, the Frankfurt School and Political Correctness by Michael uh, Minichino was the starting point for the contemporary conspiracy theory in the United States. Minichino argued that the late 20th century America had become a new dark age as a result of the abandonment of Judeo-Christian and Renaissance ideals, uh, which he claimed had been replaced in modern art with the tyranny of ugliness. He attributes this to an alleged plot to instill cultural pessimism in America, carried out in three stages by uh, George Lucas, the Frankfurt School and elite media figures and political campaigners. According to Minichino, there were two aspects of the Frankfurt School planned to destroy Western culture. First, cultural critique by Theodore Adorno and Walter Benjamin to use art and culture to promote alienation and replace Christian Christianity with socialism. This included the development of opinion polling <laughs> and advertising techniques to brainwash the populace and control political campaigning. Secondly, the plan supposedly included attacks on the traditional family structure by Herbert Marcus uh, and uh, Eric Fromm to promote women's rights, sexual liberation and polymorphous perversity to subvert patriarchal authority. <laughs> Minichino claimed the Frankfurt School was responsible for elements of the counterculture of the 1960s and the psychedelic revolution, distributing hallucinogenic drugs to encourage sexual perversion and promiscuity. Minichino's interest in this subject derives from his involvement in the La Rouche movement. Lyndon LaRouche began developing conspiracy theories regarding the Frankfurt School in 1974 when he alleged that Herbert Marcuse and Angela Davis were acting as part of COINTELPRO. Other features of the conspiracy theory uh, developed across the 1970s and 80s in the movement's magazine Air um, after the 2011 Norway attacks. Minichino repudiated his own essay, writing, I still think uh, I still like to think that some of my research was foully conducted and useful. However, I see very clearly that the whole enterprise and especially the conclusions was hopelessly deformed by uh, self-censorship and the desire in some way to support Mr. LaRouche's crack brained world view. Um, you know, type Hotep in the chat if it sounds like Mr. Minichino was on to something. I'm not saying he's 100% correct. But but please tell me, especially this part here. Type Hotep in the chat if you if you think he was on to something, especially this paragraph right here. This paragraph right here is like, like I said, we don't have to study cultural Marxism. We're living it. We're living it. It says right here. Uh, to use art and culture to promote alienation. What does alienation mean? Let's click that. Karl Marx's theory of alienation describes estrangement of people from aspects of their human nature. Oh my God. Okay. Now, that's, that reminds me of the tea people. Uh, as a consequence of the division of labor and living in, and living in a society of stratified social classes, the alienation from the self is a consequence of being a mechanistic part of a social class, the condition of which uh, estranges a person from their humanity. And we do see. OK, so dehumanization is basically what we can call alien alienation. All right, let's continue. This is why I love reading because you learn so much um, and replace Christianity with socialism. OK. I'll leave that part alone. Leave that up speculation. This part here. This included the development of opinion polling. Does that sound familiar? And advertising techniques to brainwash the populace. And control political campaigning. Does that sound familiar? Does that even feel familiar? Do you feel like you've experienced that? Secondly, the plan supposedly includes included attacks on a traditional family structure. Have we not seen the attack 
on traditional family structure. I remember in the villages section of the Black Lives Matter website, they specifically said they wanted to target the nuclear family. I can show you that. Let's see if we can find it still. I know they changed the website since then because we were just pointing out all the holes in their stuff. So, um, Let's see. Um, okay, here it goes right here. New York Post. New York Post covered this. It says right here, BLM site removes page on nuclear family structure amid NFL vets criticism. Yeah, they were called out. They were called out. We just remember I told you it was in their villages section, right? It says Black Lives Matter scrubbed the page on its website this week that disparaged the Western prescribed nuclear family structure, prompting a former NFL lineman to blast critics who accused him of previously misinterpreting the organization's incendiary message. The group, whose co-founder Patrice Colors has described herself as a fellow co-founder, Alicia Garza, as what does it say right here? Trained Marxist. <laughs> Removed a page titled What We Believe that included its public policy positions as well as describing itself as part of the global black family and change first a change first reported Monday by a Washington Examiner. We disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structures requirement by supporting each other and extended families and villages that collectively care for another, especially our children. Degree that mothers, and this is the part I always hated, and I pointed this out from day one when I read their website. This was years ago before the Trump campaign. I was telling, I warned everybody, look at this sentence right here. To the degree that mothers, parents, and children are comfortable. What's missing from this? Mothers, parents, and children. You know what's missing from this sentence? Fathers. They purposely omitted the man from the family. Purposely. But it says right here, aim to dismantle the patriarchal practice. Let's go back. Let's go back to what he said here now. Let's go back to uh, Mr. Minichino. I'm going to have to read Mr. Minichino's. Now I got a fourth book I got to read. Jesus Christ. Um, attacks traditional family structure. Right. And it says right here to subvert patriarchal authority. What does it say right here? Dismantle the patriarchal practice. How is Minichino wrong? Black Lives Matter is an admitted Marxist organization, or at least the leaders say they, they are. Wait, what did they say they were? Trained Marxist. They're trained Marxist. Here we have the wiki page on cultural Marxism. And he's basically warning us about Black Lives Matter. Drop super chats if you want to make a comment, ask a question. I'll cover those in just a moment. We're, we're winding down here a bit. OK, so secondly, the plan supposedly included attacks on a traditional family structure. Don't we see that heavy today? Like I said, you don't need to study cultural Marxism. You're living it. You are living it. Isn't that what I said before? And I said that never having studied cultural Marxism. I looked at the word cultural Marxism and I automatically knew what it meant. The words right there, culture, culture and Marxism. And I said, I don't study it because we're living it. And then I go and look this up live right here. And you see, I am correct. I didn't plan any of this. This is all improv. And I'm just like, I'm in awe right now because it's right here in front of me. Now I got to go read uh, Mini Chino's work. So it says here, secondly, the plan supposedly included attacks on the traditional family structure by Herbert Marcuse and Eric Fromm. To promote, what's it say? Women's rights. Women's rights. Women's rights. What are we seeing today? An explosion of feminism. Sexual liberation. I love you, Meg. I love you, Cardi. I love you, Nikki. But y'all are a part of the mark. Y'all are y'all are a part of cultural Marxism.
What does it say? Um, I want to find a part where it says. Right here, use art and culture. It's right here. I'm going to highlight this so when I come back, it'll be highlighted and I won't have to look for it again. Use art and culture. I love you, Meg. I love you, Cardi. I love you, Nikki. But you're part of the cultural Marxist agenda. Sexual liberation. Uh, polymorphous perversity which is described here by wiki as is a psychoanalytical psychoanalytic concept proposing the ability to gain sexual gratification outside socially normative sexual behaviors. Uh, Sigmund Freud used this term to describe sexual disposition from infancy. Whoa. All right. We got to dive into this now. Polymorphous perversity. All right. So we, we are living this. Um, Insensuous, bisexual. All right. So this is this is okay. So that's the um, that's the rainbow, that's the rainbow agenda, right? So he nails that. And subvert patriarchal authority. We showed you that. Um, counterculture, drugs. We're seeing drugs, um, heavy sexual perversion and promiscuity. Cultural Marxism. So coming back all day those people the ones storming off the heirs of this criminal ideology that caused the french and russian revolutions an ideology that transformed into cultural marxism in the second half of the 20th century they set the agenda of modern globalism i i don't see any conspiracy theories here i i i he said he seems this this very much based upon my own experience with my own eyes my own common sense seems very plausible seems very plausible Says, why is the cabinet walking off? It's a fact that Secret Cog studied at St. Anthony's College. It's also the perfect example of the ties between intelligence services, Marxism, and the recruitment of the global deep state. And then he suspended the meeting. Wow. Wow. Did not expect the presentation to go this way. Um, I'm blown away by the information I've seen today. And now I have more studying to do um, inside of the ages. Uh, shout out to you for being the only super chat here today. You're the man. You're not grifting. The rest of you grifters hit the super chat. Um, he said, love and Hotep University. What are the plans to capture culture going forward? We'll love to see Hotep broadcasting network, music, movies, sports. Um, great point. Um, I appeared in one so I'm working with um, one project I can't talk about, but we are shooting, um, I guess, a web series of some historic events um, in, in antiquity. Uh, and then another one, I, I shot uh, some comedy uh, with uh, Captain, uh, I mean, um, Kevin Sa uh, Sabo. Um, and that's kind of just like a fun project. But yeah, I um I fully plan on um you know working on our culture in America and we do our best to uh to do that here at the at, at Hotep Nation and, 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 and provide uh you know uh, a good impact on the culture. We we do we do our best. Um but yeah, that's definitely in the plans. Um, I was even trying to get together, uh, you know, you mentioned sports. I, I, I was trying to get together, uh, a Hotep versus conservative Inc, uh, basketball game, you know, like, I don't know, uh, three V three, you know, me, somebody, somebody versus Ben Shapiro and somebody else and somebody else. Right. I don't know. But like, you know, a little celebrity basketball game and broadcast it. I thought that'd be really dope. Um, Inside of the Ages, 
Um, and they'll prob they're probably watching this now. So if you see somebody pop up with a celebrity basketball game amongst the politicals, you know, well, you know, uh, hopefully they include me. And if they don't, well, at least somebody's doing it. And I think it's very important. Inside the ages said woman rights equals double the tax base with slavery. Yeah, I, I, I can't disagree with that. You know, from the first time I um, thought about that subject without any research, I was like, oh, women's rights. I'm like, oh, it sounds like they want to double their tax base. Yeah, totally common sense. I totally get that. Art Dog 999 for tuition. Thank you, Art Dog, for um, paying your tuition today and um, helping me grow this channel and um, supporting me in this mission to uh, bring you guys great information. Uh, cause it's, uh, frankly, it's not easy. I had to retype the whole transcript of that guy by hand cause I couldn't find it online and now it exists online. It's in the description box. If you guys want to read the transcript of Thierry Baudet's, uh, words in front of the, um, uh, uh, budget finance committee or whatever that was over there in the Netherlands, it's in the description box. Uh, if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button, subscribe right now, set your notifications. I know YouTube does some weird stuff with the algo. I don't know. That's what people are saying. I don't know. I don't really pay much attention to it, but hit the subscribe button, set the notifications. And, um, tonight we'll be back with a uh, hotel has been told you 2.0 patreon.com slash hotel has been told you. That's uh, another dose of hotel has been told you with Uncle Hotep and myself, uh, for our, uh, paid subscribers only. That's Hotep's Been Told You, um, 2.0, patreon.com slash Hotep's Been Told You. Uh, so I'll see you guys tonight for our VIP subscribers. Until then. Hotep. Y'all be safe now. You hear a lot of people say this, and I totally agree with it. They say, fail fast. And it's so true. But it also ties into the procrastination conversation. What, well, what is procrastination? Procrastination is nothing more than the delay of the gifts that God is ready to present us with. And we're saying, no, we're not ready for those. How about tomorrow? Because when you're on your path, you're doing what you need to do. You tend to be in alignment and the gifts come abundantly. So that's why we say, sometimes we say, hey, fail fast. Because if you started the project last Monday, you would have found out that the piece that is missing takes a week to come in the mail and now your whole project's been pushed back a week, you can't even start. But if you started on Monday, you knew, oh, I'm missing this piece, so to be here next Monday, and now you can begin working on your project. Fail fast ties into procrastination very quickly. Also, you have a lot of people that are afraid to fail. They're afraid to make mistakes. But you have to make mistakes. You have to fail. That's the only way you learn. That's the only way you gain experience. So I want people to fail. I want people to mess up. Don't be afraid of messing up. A lot of people want perfection straight out the gate. You know, you start a podcast or a show and the first one, they want it to be perfect straight out the gate. That's not possible. Just go. Done is better than perfect. Fail fast.